Some time ago, I did an introductory video on a product that was in Kickstarter at that time, and that is the serotonin folding or collapsible wood gas stove, titanium. So I've had this now for quite a few months. I've had a good number of fires in it, and I think it's time to give you my experiences with it. If you're interested, keep watching. Just before we get started, I want to thank Serotonin Outdoors for sending me this small titanium collapsible wood gas stove so that I could share it with you. So I've had the stove now for a number of months. I brought it to you at, when it was still in Kickstarter, but I had no experience with it at, at that time. So it was a preview video. Well, since then, I've had a good number of fires in this stove. So now I'm ready to share my experience experiences with it. Before I take you in and give you a closer look at the stove and assemble it for you, I just want to say special thank you to two people. First, Chris Cavers at, Bre at Brightfire Stoves. I reviewed his stove here not long ago. Chris and I communicate on a regular basis. Chris is a true gentleman and he knows his stuff when it comes to stoves. There's no question about it. He is, in my mind, one of the foremost experts on wood stove design that I'm aware of and he willingly shares his knowledge knowledge with them. Thank you, Chris. And the other person is, is Heisei Yarrow. Heisei Yarrow is a member of Stoveaholics on Facebook, and that's another person who has an incredible amount of knowledge on wood stoves. So Heisei did give me some suggestions and some advice around this as well. So a thank you to Heisei as well. Okay, we'll take a closer look at the stove. I'll assemble it for you. I'm not going to give you all the dimensions and sizes and weights and all that type of thing for two reasons. One, I gave it to you in the initial video, but I've also put it in the video description below. Suffice it to say, it is small, compact, and very lightweight. All right, let's get started. All right, so here is the stove put back in its pouch just to give you an idea of how small it is. Now I do have the accessories separate from this and we'll talk about those in a few minutes time but I wanted to show you the assembly of the stove. So I have shown you that before in that previous video but let's just quickly go through it again. So I'll take the components out, put the sack aside. The sack is a type of Kadura nylon. It is pretty good. It's not overly heavy duty but it is certainly sufficient to the task and light enough and of course this is a lightweight titanium stove so you don't want anything too heavy. So that's one, two. Yep, all right I have them all. Let me just lay some of these things aside. I won't be needing all of them right away like that. Okay so here is the basic stove all stacked together. So what do you get? You get this bottom piece. This is the tray that holds it up off of the ground. It also acts as an ash pan and keeps it up off the ground. So we'll just lay that aside for a second. This is the fire grate that will drop into the stove once it's assembled. We have two sides. It's also quite dirty from the last time I used it, of course. So these are the two sides for the stove. You can see, might as well show them to you now. These are double wall construction. So you have an interior wall and an exterior wall. And the air is going to be drawn up through the bottom, through that fire grate. I'll show it all again in a minute. And what you get is, of course, air being drawn in from the outside through those ports here, heated as it rises up the sides of the walls. That hot air then comes back into the burn chamber through these small jet ports. And in theory, they will mix with the unburnt gases, the smoke, and ignite them so you get a cleaner, more efficient, more complete combustion. All right, so as I mentioned, it is kind of dirty. So they lay those down for a second. Here are the two end pieces. So they're virtually identical with the exception of one end piece has a sliding little door on it. That serves two functions uh, I'll demonstrate in a moment. So let's start by putting this together. So what I found is that there are slots, as you can see, I've got that upside down, on the end of the stove right there. So what the, you can see there's projections on the end of the end plate, they will insert into the slots and hook on. Same thing with the other one. Let's insert and hook on like that. All right, now I gotta move to the other end. So it can be a little bit fiddly trying to get it all assembled, but once it goes together, it's, it's it goes together pretty secure. Same on that end. And the last two, it's always the last two that, there we go. Am I on? Yes, I am. And now I'm going to set that on that little fold-out stand tray. And I'll show you that. Don't quite, there we go. That's better. Okay. 
So there is the stove sitting on the stand or the tray. The last thing to have happen here is pick the fire grate up again. Now inside you can see that there are little shelves running along the inside. That's what holds the fire grate up. There, stove is fully ready, assembled and ready to burn. So let me now pick up the other accessory pieces. So one accessory piece is this little grill. Not bad. It's a uh, that's a little dirty from using it, of course, but that sits up on top. Now, uh, I understand from the makers of the stove that they have done some de redesigning and make it a little bit better. And one of the things that I noticed with this is, I might as well pick it up and show you, is it doesn't stay on very well. So you put it on, but it, it, there's really no notching. So I understand there's some notching on the newer models that will make it a little easier to keep this grill on top if you wanted to use the grill. So that's the grill. The other part, of course, is the pot stand. Now, let me bring the four pieces of the pot stand. They are, of course, also titanium. So the four pieces go together so that there are two long pieces and two side pieces. So it's like putting together cross members, but you're doing it twice. There. And here. Okay, so... Uh, I had a few comments to say on that in a second, but you can see what I've created is this uh, H double H version like this, and you can see it is a little finicky. Let me pick up the stove itself, and here's how it would work. It sets down on top of the stove like that. Okay, when it's there, it actually functions pretty well. You set your pot up on top of that, and you can move it just about anywhere over the stove. So if you want it directly over the intense flame, you can do that. You want it off to the side a little bit so it's not quite so intense, you just slide it down a little bit. All right, I've got no issue with the design intent. I guess what I have issue with is the fact that it's gonna fall apart very easily. So you gotta be careful when you pick it up and you set it on, it's on there. If you try to move it and you knock it off, it's gonna come apart in pieces. That's my only comment. I don't think it is the best design for a pot stand above the stove. It does create the clearance you need for airflow around your pot. It's just, I don't know, there's too many pieces and I suppose if I misplaced them, I'm not gonna be able to use it anyway. All right, so that's one use for it, is a pot stand. The other use for it is with the burner. I'll show you the gas burner in a moment. I'm not gonna set it up, but I'll show it to you. Do you see the slots here? And again, on the other side, those are for the gas burner. And I laid that down here. So this also came with this stove as part of that Kickstarter. So this would actually grab on, that stand would grab on to the sides of the gas burner and then the remote hose to the tank would run out through the opening on the end. That's part of one of the reasons for it is to be able to run the hose out through so that this is inside of your stove inside of this little stand and this has run out to your gas canister. Okay, that works pretty good, I guess. I guess that's not a bad way of doing it. Now, when it comes to alcohol stoves, uh, this was supposed to be a little bit different. At least the new design is. This isn't quite big enough, but the new ones apparently are big enough that this was set down on top of your trangia. So you can see it's a little bit small inside of there. But if you put this on top of your trangia, then you've got a pot stand with nothing, no metal in the flame itself. So not a bad concept. I just, uh, I'm not sold. I think that's, it's probably obvious. I'm not sold on this. I just think it's a little bit too, uh, flimsy, finicky, too many pieces, things that can go wrong with it. And that's what I'd have to say. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is this. And this is just a little solid fuel plan so that you can set this up inside as well. And you would put this on top of this, down inside the stove to get some height for it. Okay, uh, that, that's not a bad thing, but they, you know, they gimmicked it a little bit by putting some serrations here, which can be helpful if you're trying to scrape some fat wood, but you don't need it. I have no idea why you need a hex wrench on the side of this, and I'm still not sure what that's all about, but there is a little bit of measurements in centimeters here if you want that as well. I just think they try too hard to include too many things in with the stove. And the last thing, of course, that came with this whole set, and take it or leave it, it's functional in, the, in that it is works, it's just not necessary for the stove, and this is a bellows and barbecue 
stick, I guess you might say, for putting a hot dog on. It's got the, st there it is. If I can get it out properly, it's kind of stuck in there. There we go. All right, see, thread it on the end of the double hook and you would just thread it on like that. And it is telescopic, but if you want to use it as a bellows, take the hook off of the end of it and just use it now as a bellows for your stove. I may need that with the stove today, we'll see. All right, let's set it up and put it in use. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to stay with the traditional way in which a wood gas stove is supposed to be used, the way it's supposed to be loaded with wood and ignited. And that is with a top lit updraft burn, meaning you load the wood first, light a fire on top of the wood and allow the fire to move down through the fuel. As it does that, it creates smoke through a system known as pyrolysis, then gasification, and it is that smoke that is, or that combustible materials, that is ignited by the heat and the injection of air that has been warmed as it moves up through the side walls of the stove. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, in theory, a stove like this is used by collecting wood off of the forest floor, stuff like I have here. That only works as long as the wood is dry. I found some dry wood, but a lot of it was bending and not snapping. So I split out some of the hard wood that I have laying around here. It also is, well, it's pretty good. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay the hard wood in on top, maple primarily. Uh, you can do it vertically if you want to cut it small enough. You can do it horizontally. You can do it a little haphazardly, which is what I'm going to try and do here. Just kind of give it room for air to flow around it. And I think that is just about enough. Maybe one or two more pieces. Those are a little bit big. I think I'll stop here with just that many pieces. You can always load more wood after the fire really gets going. And I guess one of the things this port on the side could be is for feeding wood in, but that will make a big difference in airflow. And that's one of the things about a wood gas stove. It is all about airflow. Too little airflow and the wood won't, won't burn, of course. Too much airflow and you don't get the gasification that you're looking for. So we're gonna build a little fire on top. Let me show you the wood that I have in. You can see I just laid it in horizontally. Oh, by the way, if you notice the mat that I'm using on the ground, this is a fiberglass fire mat that I use for small wood stoves on the forest floor. I did clear all the duff away, but just to make sure I wanted to put that uh, down as well, just a little layer of protection. This is a little bit of wood wool. I'm kind of cheating, I guess you might say, and a couple little pieces of birch bark and some other wood, and some little pieces that I did pick up off of the forest floor. So let me just light this. This is maybe cheating a little bit, but it will get things going a little bit quicker. There. All right, I can probably put that on as well, that little bit of a feather from some feather sticking I was practicing here. And now I just wait for a minute or so. That little fire on top has to build an intensity enough so that it starts to heat the fuel below it and at the same time draw air up through the bottom of the wood stove. So you can see the smoke is starting to be generated there. And uh, well, it's just gonna take a minute or two. In the meantime, what have I got to do? Here is that little pot stand. Here's something else I'm not a fan of. I probably should have gloves on for this because that's not gonna sit on until some of that wood starts to drop down inside. Yeah, and I can't do anything with it now because it's already gotten hot. Another reason why I'm not a huge fan of that pot stand, but it will settle down in a moment or two as the wood starts to combust. So I'm gonna give it a second or two to really get going. And when it does, and I start to see the fuel starting to uh, burn some, and if any gasification is taking place, and that's when I'll bring it back and give you some close-ups. All right, it's a couple minutes later, the fuel, the flames are starting to move down into the fuel. It'll consume very slowly, because of course I have that horizontal stack of the fuel, which is what I wanted. I did take the pot stand off because I wanted you to have a clear view of what's taking place inside of the stove. I am standing or kind of kneeling to create shadow to make sure that it is showing up. So here's what I'm so seeing and I'm hoping that it's showing up clearly on the video as well. There is in fact secondary combustion taking place. 
along the holes on this side of the stove and occasionally along the jets on the other side of the stove but not completely. So here's been my experience with the stove is that as you can see it's a very clean burning stove. It is not smoking in any way. It is burning well and there is gasification as I said. It seems to be all of the jets, well they hit or miss, they don't stay lit, they kind of come and go. But that's been my experience all along is that I don't get complete gasification taking place or the, all the jets don't ignite at any given time. So part of this might be the fact that there is a cross breeze. So let me set up a windscreen around it. See if that makes a difference in terms of, and it did, it made a huge difference. So that's also good to know. All right, so what we should be seeing now is that there is, in fact, secondary combustion taking place along the jets on this side of the stove and some of the jets along the other side of the stove, but not all of the jets, not at any one time. And, uh, yeah, that's been my comment on it. Now, this is a comment that came from Heisei Aero when I first introduced this stove and I think it's a very fair comment. What happens as the ash builds up in the bottom of the stove itself with the fire grate? Well the fire grate is pretty much wide open in the bottom so it would take a while for the ash to really build up but what you're having is you're, it's going to start to impair airflow into the stove. So the question becomes, should there not have been maybe another set of holes along the bottom of those two walls to allow airflow to come in through the sides of the jets? They would still draw up, it would still ignite at the top of the jets up here, but uh, I'm, again I'm not the stove designer and this is something that I've learned from both Heise as well as Chris Cavers. Uh, yeah, okay so what I'm going to do, I think I better put a glove on for this, is I am going to put the pot stand back on the stove. Burning well enough. And I know this sounds like a condemnation of the stove itself and it, it, it's, it's a little bit disappointing but at the same time this is still a very clean burning stove. So I put the pot stand back on. A little bit of water in my pot. It's always good to see what this does to a stove. And uh, yeah, you can see it's working well enough. The pot I'm using is my 1100 milliliter Tom Shoe titanium pot. It has about a 13, 12 to 13 centimeter diameter to it. So I just wanted to give you some perspective for the size. It's a good match for this stove. Small stove, you don't need a large pot. In fact, a large pot would probably not be of an advantage here. But uh, yeah, it's working well enough now. Again, I can still see some gasification taking place, but nowhere near what I would, would have hoped to see when I first got the stove. Now, having said that, I'll give you a few more thoughts on this, but first, I'm going to let this fuel burn through, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few more thoughts on the collapsible titanium wood gas stove from Serotonin Outdoors. So I just got to address this right off of the top so that I can get it out of the way. I really do not like the pot stand arrangement. I think what they tried to do here is to get three or four functions out of this. This is primarily meant to be a pot stand on top and it works as a pot stand. At the same time, because there are four separate pieces, the chances of it falling apart or losing parts of it just increase dramatically. So it works as a pot stand, but they also wanted this to work as the holder for the gas burner as well. It'll do that. Actually, it'll do that better because it forces the sides into a, a little bit of a spring action and holds them in place. So it's probably better at that. The new and revised version is larger than this, and that means it will work well on top of the Trangia as a burner stand there as well. I just think they tried too hard to get too many functions out of this. I don't know what the alternative is, but I know this is not what my preferred pot stand would be for the stove. All right, let's just set that aside. It is filthy and I feel like I've got it on my face somewhere trying not to touch my face with the, my dirty hands. Okay, one really good thing about this is it cools down really, really quickly. So as soon as it got down to the coals, I was able to pick this up, dump the hot coals into the fireplace here so that I could dose them with water. And by the time I dosed them with water, 
I was ready to pick this up and start with the rest of the video. So that's one thing about this stove. It works really well that way. Let's just talk about the effects the heat has on the titanium because that's a pretty intense fire going inside the stove. Did it warp? Yeah, it did. Not a lot, but it did. So here's where I want to show you. The tray that you have right here does warp a little bit. It does in no way impair the function of the stove. Just for those who like things to be perfect, this is going to bug them that it does this. It doesn't bug me in the least. I like it. The, I'm, oh, I shouldn't say I like it. I'm happy. I'm okay with it. It still works the way I want it to work. Now, the other piece that warps here is the fire grate inside of the stove. You can see that there is some warping. It's a thin piece of titanium. I expected it to warp, but still it did not impair the function of the stove. And what I'll do the next time I go to use it is put it in upside down and it should come back to true or very close to it. The other components that warp are the end pieces so they have bowed out a little bit on both ends. Not very much and again not enough to affect the performance of the stove. What has shown no effects from the heat other than discoloration are the sidewalls. Because they're a box affair, the structural design of these things, they are not showing any signs of deformation or warping whatsoever. So there's a small benefit there. Okay, let's just address the whole issue of the design of this stove. So when this arrived, I was anticipating a wood gasification stove kind of like the long sought after pinnacle of stove design, something that's collapsible, lightweight, and works as a full wood gas stove. Uh, for the most part, wood gas stoves are cylindrical devices like the solo stove or the bush buddy and that they work but uh, you know we'd all like to have something that's collapsible and still act as a wood good wood gas stove. Why do we want a good gas stove in the first place? Clean, burning, efficient, heat, no smoke, or a little smoke. That's, that's why we want them. This does not deliver that in, in, in its performance. It does partially. So after I got over my disappointment that this was not gasifying completely, no sec the secondary combustion was not occurring 100% of the time in all of the jets, then I started to realize, you know what? Even if I got 50% of the jets firing at any given time, that's better than none of the jets. And what I mean by that is, even with 50% of the jets firing, I was getting a cleaner burn. Certainly, it was pretty much a smoke-free fire, as you saw. So they were helping if they weren't working to 100% efficiency. So that's the way to look at this. If you look at this and you're looking for the performance that you get from your solo stove, you're probably going to be disappointed. But if you look at this as a lightweight titanium collapsible stove that is very compact and easy to store, easy to assemble, easy to use, and has at least partial wood gasification, then you're going to be happy with it. That's probably the best way to look at it. It's just that's the way this is designed. There's too much airflow in through the bottom. It doesn't slow the burning down. There is no focuser to help keep some of the smoke and wood gas down inside so that it can combust with the hot air as it rises through the exterior walls. I guess my good friend Chris Cavers or Yese Aero would probably uh, have a better description of it than I'm giving it, but basically it is not a great wood gas stove. But it is a great stove, just the same. Again, just don't expect 100% gasification and you won't be disappointed. Okay, I think I have given all the attention I can to this stove. Um, what I will do is I'm going to link the initial video I did, the preview video, so you can get a little bit better while the stove was still clean and brand new and get some uh, get the specifications for it. I will put them in the video description below. But if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.